Hey everybody, this is Rhino and we're back to another recording of Hearthstone. Today is Wednesday, August 7th and I am at the risk of no one actually being able to watch this live. I am not seeing the video live even for my own uh, my own following of my own channel. Uh, I have not received notifications for it. I'm refreshing my subscription list. Uh, I'm not seeing it there, but whatever. I guess we'll move forward as if we can eventually be seen by somebody. Uh, August 7th, Wednesday. So the new expansion, the Hearthstone, came out. And so we have play 100 cards, uh, Saviors of Old Om. We can reroll this uh, with a watch and learn. Maybe we can get that done really quickly uh, if this guy jumps in. Uh, and we have a new tavern brawl too so there is a lot that can be done today or that needs to be done um i've disabled the mod the extension to chrome that was making uh, twitter look like it used to look because i ran into the same problem that old twitter had which is uh you would think you'd seen all the new postings but you hadn't and you had to scroll all the way down and that's an incredibly time intensive process uh, apparently this guy is not going to do anything so let's just do this tavern brawl uh, all right it's a brawlicium the winner goes to spoils the more wins um, well same usually requires an entrance fee but this time first time it's free all right is there any rule here? No. I don't think there is any any difference here. So for just a sake of time, it's best I think to take the Paladin deck here, uh, which has been a successful deck. Uh, possibly not the most successful deck, but it seems like it's the most successful deck. Copy it. And then use it again. Now, the new expansion happened, so there are all new cards, certainly. I opened nearly 150 cards, but this expansion also came out earlier, and it has a single player experience too. Uh, so we need gold like crazy. We, we need a ton of gold, and. Uh, and we very well may run into a situation where I can't afford the fourth week of, of this uh, of this expansion uh, in the single player mode, mode because it's it's gonna be 700 gold and I'm definitely not spending any money on this this Hearthstone at this point uh, I did very little on, on this expansion, I, I did the standard looking at all the cards and card pack opening video, but uh, it didn't, didn't really translate into views. Um, I don't know if that's just YouTube. I don't know if that's kids going back to school. I don't know if that's YouTube specifically hates my channel or has me in the category of channels they hate, uh, which is probably all gaming channels. Uh, but yeah, I'm not rolling in views anymore from Hearthstone expansions. I'm not thrilled with Hearthstone expansions. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, I guess. Once that Marvel game comes out, if it's any good at all, I think we've got to jump ship uh, five right plus years. Uh, this is one of the new cards. If you have a quest, draw a card. But you can guarantee that you have a quest, practically. Uh, it's it's close to impossible that you wouldn't have a quest, honestly. Uh, and play this card, because you get quests on the first draw, always. The thing with all of these quests is until I can see them, uh, I don't know what the effect is. So this quest gives you the Heart of Vernal, which is a hero power, your battle cries trigger twice this turn now there was a minion that would trigger your battle cries twice and I guess maybe he's gone into wild uh, as a character 
that's my only guess as to what what happened with him. I, this is not going to work out well for me. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to basically have to see all nine of the heroes play all nine of the new quests cards before I even understand how valuable these quest cards are uh, to think maybe I would at some point use dust or some other element to uh, to have that uh, or use gold to open more packs to try to get the quest cards uh, the one thing this expansion premature as it is does is it sets a nice point it's a line in the sand as far as quest cards and uh, legendary cards uh, if this was, this could easily be the beginning of Hearthstone 2.0 as all the other cards get moved into wild. Uh, that being said, it's it's probably way too, too late for Hearthstone. Um, they've, one of the things I said while I was doing the card pack opening is there is just this situation here where I don't feel like Hearthstone itself is at version 2.0 or 3.0 or 4.0 or 5.0. It's been five plus years. I've played it for five years and I didn't start at the beginning so I know it's been over five years. It, it still feels like at best we're at Hearthstone 1.5 in, in a way that is not paralleled by like Magic the Gathering. Where, like, when I look at modern Magic the Gathering, as somebody who played it during Ice Age, uh, which was like the third or fourth expansion, um, there, to my memory, there were no planeswalkers. There, there was none of most of the elements that are in Magic the Gathering right now. Uh, so. The, there's been major, major changes over, sure, a longer period of time, but it, it still is very much a situation of, of, I don't feel like they've iterated or changed anything. Uh, when Hearthstone first launched, you had hero powers, you had nine hero classes, you had weapons, you had minions, the minions had effects and mana and cost and attack and health and five plus years later you have those exact same things still and nothing new the only slightly new things that have been added are different key phrases and effects uh, but that's kind of it and that's just not enough uh, so he used his double battle cry there to to cause me to Lose two of my minions. But I don't think it's gonna save them. Uh, I have decided to go back to posting a default chat message. It doesn't seem like it was affecting me one way or another uh, that way. I did just change all the data and information. Like, on my live stream, so I don't know what's going on here, but I'm definitely not finding what I would want to find. And depending on the day of the week, if I search Rado on Hearthstone or on YouTube, I'll get five different things. Maybe it's just their servers, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking at, at my YouTube page right now and it does not say I'm live at all. Hmm. I wonder. Let's see. Well, I 
guess can't really worry about that if this just comes out as a recording later, but th that's still fine. Alright, so I only need to do one more damage. Hmm. Um, and survive, so... Draw a card first, that's always the strategy. And then that'll give me magnetic, and that'll let me do that. And then I can play this, since we're trying to play cards anyways, and then we can just win. Going through all of the Twitter feed and actually finding everything, uh, there is a decent amount of news today. Uh, furthermore, there's still a lot of work. Uh, like, I'm gonna have to have a contractor and the, my plumber come back tomorrow, so I'm gonna have to spend probably most of the day watching them. Um, so I'll be not really accomplished anything because of that and uh, I'm still working on my backup server uh, which could be incredibly boring conversations I desperately need to find a special distribution uh, a special flavor of Linux Mint Deb Debian Edition that just has server side a, a setup uh, elements set up by default and configured by default um, it's I, I get it that Linux Mint Debian Edition is mostly for end users, so it doesn't make a lot of sense that you would have Greetings, Apache Batman. and MySQL and all of that set up by default. Um, but what that does is put an incredible amount of burden of I've got to remember what I want installed and I have to uh, remember how I set them up before and uh, since I'm running about four Apache website servers on the one server um, as subfolders, basically, um, that there's different configurations because some of them are, most of them are pretty old servers that don't run a tight enough security. So you need, what I need is something that just by doing the one click install has Linux installed, which would be Linux and Debian Edition, Apache installed, MySQL, and PHP installed, which is a, a LAMP stack. It's a basic thing to to running the server. I, I need SSH installed and configured. I need X11 VL, VNC installed and configured those two softwares allow me to remotely connect to the server so i don't have to sit in an incredibly uncomfortable chair in an incredibly uncomfortable room and try and configure things from that one position i can float around well at the very least my house if not the entire world configuring it um I need fail to ban installed. That should be installed, frankly, everywhere, uh, it, just by default. Uh, I want Peer Guardian installed, which acts as kind of a a sim some overly simplified uh, firewall and block list manager. It's really mostly a block list manager, but it does pretty much block every port until you tell it to stop blocking ports uh, at least by the default installation um, reporting for duty all right let's let's start playing this otherwise I'm gonna I'm gonna die um, you want Clam AV installed uh, if you're running a server. It's not likely that you would run into a Linux based virus ever. Uh, that's not particularly what Clam AV is for. It's for scanning files that would be uploaded that might be a Windows virus uh, and making sure that those, uh, it'll, at the very least, you could scan them. I mean, you, you can kind of have Clam AV installed and configured right to just update the security definitions and 
never actually scan anything ever uh, but just having it there in case you need it which is something certainly a lot of Linux people would say well that's ridiculous to to have a software installed that people may very well not ever use because that wastes bandwidth in space but I think for an antivirus that that works pretty well uh, the basic for my own sanity the sudo uh, issue where you have to type in sudo sudo which is super user do and then type in the root password or you're running a on gnome there's a software called gk sudo that does it for the visual apps um, internally and the gnome keyring issue in general um, all of those require you when you're running a server uh, and setting up a server to type in the root password ridiculously large amounts of time uh, to the point where it would like this is how you get bad security is is it, it's such a frustration to type in the password default password all the time I would be understanding if somebody had the root password just be like the letter A and that's it just something incredibly simplistic and then they would just make a note like at the end of all of the setup let's change the password to something else and uh, that's not something uh, Linux Mint Debian Edition also does not have a root login password set up at all so uh, you can't type in SU on the console and change your your user to the super user of the root um, until you type in like sudo password uh, sudo space root password or something no password root I guess would be it, what it would be um, I don't even know there's so much typing so much texting uh, technical stuff and one little mistake uh, also because it's a server it needs ZFS support and probably BTR butterfs BTRFS support installed by default uh, just because you're if you're running a server you're almost certainly running a red, red array or something like that um, and those things are just not those, those things are just not installed so every everything I've mentioned of, of what is probably gibberish to most people is 20 minutes to an hour of banging your head and just a lot of Google searches and just like oh I've got to type this oh I've got to type that and there's a lot of conflicting information and a lot of wrong information because it was right information 10 years ago five years ago two years ago but the things have changed um, Uh, the most recent frustration is trying to install on Apache a reverse proxy pass so a HTTPS connection can be established and used so people can't uh, snoop on your trans uh, your your website browsing to the server but the server software that it's actually connecting to is not complicated enough to actually use HTTPS so you have to basically have the server strip out all the security on on the server itself so that the website part of it can understand it and then when the website part of it responds then you have to put back the security and um, and connect through the rest of the internet in a secure fashion and in theory that should be as simple as two to four lines of, of text in the configuration file in practice doesn't seem like it works that well or that easily uh, this and this oh man I played wrong I played really wrong I would have done so much better to draw the cards first uh, so now I've got to kind of try and protect myself. Converting stored energy. Let's go! 
Um, so yeah, that's where I've been, just messing with Linux a lot. Starting over from scratch, uh, uh, installing everything. Um, at my current position, uh, fingers crossed I won't have to format and reinstall everything all over again. Um, I do have Nextcloud working and it seems like it will work, although it seems to be running extremely slowly, at least in the create new text documents uh, function. Uh, maybe there's more of a reason that. for that, but I don't know what it is. Hmm. The... Uh, the next thing is to get other software to be able to access the data folders of Nextcloud because uh, inherently what I want is an admin, admin out account that holds on to and deals with all the data that's being served, uh, almost all the data, like anything that, that is being downloaded, any music, any movies, any photos, anything like that, uh, need to be set up as shared folder, folders or private folders, uh, that, and some of those shared and private folders need to be accessed by other softwares, for instance, uh, an ebook folder needs to be accessed by Calibre, so Calibre, uh, which is the ebook software, can then generate its web server soft software, uh, giving two very different experiences as far as how you're going to access uh, how one would access the the ebooks if you're just trying to sync the ebooks to a desktop or if you're trying to browse the ebooks using certain tags and certain key features that are specialized to ebooks and not something that you could easily do with nextcloud uh, now nextcloud does have and pl have plugins and some of this stuff it can do is getting down to the point where uh there is probably one server uh, element that doesn't need to be run anymore, um, but it seems like all the others still kind of have that need to exist. This, this, and then in the turn. Uh, there's a a web server, a simplistic web server software out there called COPS, which is, stands for um, Calibri, Calibri, Calibre OPDS or SD. Uh, that is a protocol to synchronize ebooks. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to need to install Apache anymore. I think that feature might be significantly built into Nextcloud enough that it it doesn't need its own uh, software. The only thing there would be uh, how does the Nextcloud free software, which that is in itself an a, a amazing improvement, is that previously the, the own cloud software uh, seemed to all either not work very well or cost money on Android Nextcloud software from provided from Nextcloud is free uh, and that is is very very helpful um, Nextcloud again being a server that you run in the similar vein to Dropbox but honestly capable of doing a lot more than what I think Dropbox uh, uh, strives to accomplish uh, so yeah, there's there, there's some hope there. Uh, Mine, Minecraft OS as a web server uh, to run Minecraft servers. Um, that still needs to be worked on. And uh, and so that that's another thing I'll have to decide where 
I want all of those files and folders to really stand. Uh, so there's there's a ton of work, and it's all just really, really slow work, too, because there's a lot of it like, where you have to just wait for something to install. Unfortunately, as you can kind of tell from this conversation, though, the, all this really boils down to the fact that I haven't played any new games in what has been a rather long amount of time and this vacation is just getting longer and longer as far as the, as far as the time it's taking to, to actually get back to playing something um, and yeah that sucks certainly So we should probably just try and get through all of the news. Um, yeah. I just got a notification that the Talus Principle happened. And still nothing, I think, on my YouTube channel about me being live right now. Hmm. Nothing on my subscription feed about me being live. Interesting. Interesting. How could one even be streaming and OBS say you're, you're streaming just fine when when it, everything YouTube has. Uh, and the thing I did here is really not something that should have been flagged by by YouTube in any way whatsoever is I got rid of tags. I said, "Hey, let's no let's filter out some of these tags and and uh, let's get it down from the usual pushing up to 500 character limit down to 250." Uh, so yeah. Well played. We're. I'm, I'm not gonna worry about this stream any further though. We're doing pretty good on the Tavern Brawl. Um, I guess if you get 12 victories, you get bigger rewards. Um, I think that's how, how the Brawl scene works. I, I don't think this just keeps on going after 12. Um, of course, we've only gotten like two or three victories so far, so it's still still a long way away yeah so i guess i just need time and so let's let's go through all the news and i uh, get rid get, uh, go through all the news and what how do you say that uh, save myself as much time as possible um, the first story, I don't really have an article to show you, but um, apparently 2K, um, own, owners or parent company of Rockstar, I believe, I, although oh, I'm not even certain about that bit of the information. Uh, normally when we have a Borderlands related snafu, it is the CEO of Gearbox. In this instance, it does not seem like the CEO of Gearbox has been is directly involved at all and if anything i i have to applaud randy pitchford for being mostly silent for the past three or four weeks uh to he is somebody finally got to him clearly and told him uh, to not cause controversy uh so then it just becomes ironic uh that you have 2k sending Two contracted private investigators to question slash harass um, a YouTuber who was able to follow a Twitch account that uh, that was streaming privately, but every time it started streaming, because of how Twitch worked, they were leaking out screenshots 
And so this person was saying, hey, we found this screenshot. He was acting as a news reporter. We, we found this new screenshot of Borderlands uh, 3. Where he's, this is a super fan, a super hyped person about Borderlands uh, 3. And so he was uh, talking slash speculating, I suppose, around that. Um, as you've seen with a lot of a lot of big fans that like little leaks which this effectively was a leak uh, uh, by Borderlands themselves get out and people get hyped and people talk about it uh, there's nothing wrong with that that's news uh, inherently you could go into a much longer conversation about how uh, everybody in a corporate environment hates the the idea of free press and the ability to to have information uh, uh, the freedom of the press and the, the the ability to learn things on the schedule or different than the creators of the game so they sent out um they they sent out two people to uh, private investigators to question slash harass this guy and trespass on his lawn and his proper response now in retrospect he says and I agree with would have been to say I'm ordering you to leave right now and I'm calling the police if you don't and that is it don't open the door to him uh, frankly if private investigators came to your door for any reason it's not good news Private, private investigators aren't aren't publishers clearinghouse. They they don't have a big check for you. Uh, they're, they're not coming to you. Uh, they're not coming to your door particularly to, to tell you good news. Uh, let's say a private investigator was hired to find a long lost relative and like give them money, which almost certainly that sounds like a scam to begin with. The first thing they would do is send a letter. Like, it would be so much more efficient for them to send a letter to do anything positive. They only show up at your front door because they're trying to intimidate you. That's the only reason. Uh, they, they, don't, they don't come to your house for any other reason. Uh, and they could call themselves private investigators, but they're basically Pinkertons. They're basically thugs. Uh, and, and they were acting as that in this case. After this, after he talked to them stupidly, instead of it would have been much better if he got him arrested, based on what else happened. Uh, then 2K filed seven complaints, seemingly on one DMCA form of copyright infringement on his YouTube channel. Uh, so uh, either they abused or misused the DMCA once on several seven individual videos that they claimed on one DMCA form or they abused and misused the DMCA seven times and then removed six of them uh, in a way to uh, intimidate and threaten and attack his YouTube channel they attacked his uh, it it seems like he's like I will editorialize here it seems pretty obvious that uh, that they reported his discord channel for promoting cheats or something along that lines something he definitely was not doing um, it was uh, it was a category of promoting cheats cracks modified software or something like that that apparently discord doesn't allow so they got his discord server shut down uh, almost immediately after he talked to him. Uh, uh, again, these... At least that, that's my opinion. That's thats my guess as to what happened. Uh, Access denied. Access denied. Converting stored energy. Uh, and did they do anything else to him? Hmm. Nothing so far, but I wouldn't be surprised if they, they threatened to sue him, too. 
Uh, and all of this is because they leaked out information and because he's reporting on leaks that they don't want to advertise. We're only about a month out of Borderlands 3 coming out. So, uh, and I will editorialize, I'm editorializing a lot here, that it seems such a waste of time and so pathetic and so, uh, so ridiculous to to have gone after this person. Assuming his story is true at all. Like, this is all coming from him directly. He could be uh, putting this in a completely different light. Uh, it might very well... Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if actually, no, he's he's hacking into the servers or doing something completely different or uh, he's made up the entire story completely. Um, those are all things that are believable. Uh, other things that are believable is that Randy Pitchford directly told 2K to do this. Um, if 2K, which it seems they did, um, oh, I forgot to look at the quest. Let's see. It gave him Obos Guy, restore three health. If you target a minion, it gets plus three, plus three. And the quest was activate the Obelisk, restore 15 health. All right, that's not terrible. Mm. Um, so the story, as is being claimed, is that 2K is just being extremely, extremely dickish, for lack of a better term, um, to a YouTuber or a news reporter for no reason. Uh, really, there, there's nothing, nothing's been leaked out on Borderlands 3 that would be bad about the game um, or that would kill the hype on the game more than this story. Uh, now we have yet another reason why people don't want to buy this game. Um, we already had the fact that it was a um, Epic Store timed exclusive for six months. Uh, we already had everything with Randy Pitchford killing the buzz on Borderlands 3. Borderlands 3 is almost certainly going to be the biggest game left to be released this year. There, there was no reason to do this at all. Uh, this tiny YouTuber nobody had heard of before uh, was not getting enough views for it to matter. Uh, doing these type of things never makes a big company look good. Uh, the only time it even slightly works is when you have like Nintendo of America or Nintendo of Japan taking down love ROMs and those ROM sites. And even then, it, it's pretty much a case of most people are, that know those websites are not happy with it. Uh, and so even when it is an instance of, of blatant uploading ROMs and such, uh, that's... That's ridiculous. What you could also say is it does seem like nowadays people have completely given up on going after um, going after torrenters for video game things at least. Um, seems I have not heard a story of anybody uploading a torrent of a video game or a hack and, and getting any kind of like legal servings against them in a very long time instead they're going after youtubers who are leaking uh, who are reporting on leaks of insignificant amounts uh, which does go to show that like yeah if if you try to make if you try to do YouTube that they find a way they have a way to get to you because YouTube has made it so easy for any any aggressive party to attack your YouTube channel and YouTube desperately needs to fix that um, so yeah you're in this weird position where right now I have to assume this story is true I have to assume 2k is a bunch of jerks um, I kind of knew that was the case but I thought they had mostly left Gearbox alone or at least, at least left it to Randy Pitchford to, to be the jerk in that cycle um, but seems like that's not true um, it's hard to make the thought or have the argument that this is an example of 
why Borderlands 3 is going to fail. Uh, like that 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 is potentially one of the most scary scenarios you could tinfoil hat here is maybe 2k knows that Borderlands 3 is gonna kind of suck he knows it's gonna fail because it's an epic store exclusive and now they're trying to create bad press on their own game as a way of potentially um, explaining away to the shareholders why this game didn't sell as well as it should uh, that's a ridiculous thought certainly I mean that that is full on insane paranoid circular thinking but wow if that were the truth that that's not good uh, on the other hand as a youtuber I, I half think that because you get so such a notoriety and such attention when something like this happens maybe you should just as a youtuber always make this kind of drama up and just claim people are are attacking you and putting dmca strikes on your account uh, it seems like it might be a strategy to get attention and get more views uh, but yeah I don't it would be an extremely dishonest way to try and get views and I don't know in the long run if that actually would end up with you having an audience that cared about you as much as just a drama audience that would subscribe to you once and then never watch any of your videos anyways on the other hand because of that extremely high a thousand subscriber mark having a thousand drama people come subscribe to your channel to show their solidarity and then never watch any of your videos might still be really welcome as a concept Reporting for duty. Let's move on and cover the rest of the news and the games. We have a decent amount of them. Uh, Gamma Sutra has an article, Good Job, Deep Silver Volition is hiring a project manager in Champaign, Illinois. The question, I guess, here in particular is what is this project manager going to be working on for Deep Silver Volition? Hmm. Let's see. What I could do is I could search them and see what they're the rumored next title is um, mm. somewhat well I can somewhat search reporting for duty Let's do one more turn the games on deep silver volitions lists are Saint Rose games red faction games agents of mayhem the Punisher, when did the Punisher come out? Descent, Summoner, Summoner 2, Free Space, Free Space 2. Um, so, if I look at the list of Volition games, let's see. And then scroll down on Wikipedia, let's see if there's anything. Nope. I don't know if... How does this... 1998, I guess you scroll down to, to get to the latest one. This chart is seemingly not in a great order. Converting stored energy. Photonic Mercs! So their most recent game was Agents of May Mayhem and then a, a, a Saints Row Gata Hell in 2015. Um, yeah, and the last game they canceled was a game called Insane, which I have never heard of. Not surprising, you know. Um, so, almost certainly this is a case of a game that's uh, go going to be uh, a Saints Row series project. Um, see if Gat Out of Hell came to the Switch. No, it didn't. Saints Row 4, 
Doesn't seem like it ever came to the Switch either. Uh, Red Faction never came to the Switch. Saints Row 2 never came to the Switch. Uh, Saints Row the Third did come to the Switch in 2019. So it would be either Saints Row 4 getting ported to the Switch, Saints Row Gather of Hell coming to the Switch, or Agents of Mayhem coming to the Switch. I well, we got three victories. It's not terrible. 25 gold, 30 gold, and a pack. So the question is, do I hold on to this pack uh, till the next card pack opening video, or do I just open it now? I think I kind of have to wait and just wait till the next card pack opening. There you go. Let's spectate and watch and learn on this. And that will give us a great opportunity to uh, to cover the news. Uh, Techcraft has an article: Rocket League loot crates are being removed. Now I bought Rocket League, so that is great um, that they're being removed. Assuming that the the crates aren't replaced with something worse, or that the content is just not going to be available to get in any way. Um, random crates were introduced in the September 2016, including cosmetics players could buy into crates to, for a chance to get. Uh, let's see. There's a full statement here. Let's see. Later this year, we will remove all paid randomized crates from Rocket League, replacing them with a system that shows the exact items you're buying in advance. This is similar this to changes implemented nice. e earlier this year by the Fortnite Save the World team. Rocket Pass Premium DLC cards and eSports shop items will continue to be offered for direct purchase alongside our new system. Now I'm in a weird position because I have Rocket League on Steam. One assumes once it becomes an Epic exclusive, since it's owned by Epic now, uh, that any new DLC will not be available, uh, but old DLC will be available. Um, I think you, a lot of people probably got too crazy into the Rocket League scene and bought a bunch of cosmetics and DLC that they really shouldn't have. And I think if you hold yourself a little bit more accountable and just hold yourself back a little bit on on frivolous spending rocket league in its basic form is perfectly fine that i don't think there's any element that you need to buy outside of the main game uh, and i look at rocket league as a kids game that adults can certainly enjoy too but it is just a drive around car game playing soccer with a giant soccer ball uh, it is also a fad game that is lost its fad at this point, so that is another thing to consider. Um, Job done. <laughs> moving on, we have a game on Steam here called Chaos Wind, which has a lot of dark screenshot syndrome in it, and looks like you're mostly from what I could see running around a a hallway that's just been generated there, there's these red faced enemies and it seems like it's kind of just zombies in the hallway I will say that there's some more polish on this than most visual art uh, most of the visuals in low effort games this person seems like they're actually proud of it they're putting a name which one assumes is a real name uh, but what I see here as a core gameplay loop is a first-person shooter in hallways something similar to the example of uh, Doom uh, 3 which Doom 3 had its problems certainly too uh, this is nine dollars and seventy nine cents English with full audio third party EULA. It's discounted to nine dollars and seventy four cents. 
I'm wondering if I want to give this game a chance, and I just don't think feel that generous right now. So, uh, I think Chaos Wind is not going to make it to the fall list. Uh, there is some other good news that we'll talk about later. Uh, apparently, Steam is going to um, stop uh, stop allowing people to manipulate the upcoming releases section so much that time release changes now are going to require some form of approval from Valve. Now, the, the problem inherently with that is that Valve's approval processes up until this point have been 99.9% uh, sure whatever, everything's okay, ver and then the 0.1%, 0.001% uh, that wasn't approved is usually not approved because it's an adult game and they don't want to approve it because it's got too much too many characters that look too young to whoever happens to be looking at the game on Valve's side at that point uh, with the Moe art style. I, I, I think inherently it, it just boils down to a lack of understanding the difference between reality and fiction and the Moe art style in general that is extremely popular still uh, and has been for about a decade in anime, Japanese it. animation in general. Uh, moving on to the next game, we have something just all Asian characters. It looks like it's a clicker game with a bunch of Asian text that you click, I guess, on the good things. And, or you click on everything and it goes to your heart and strengthens you. Um, this looks like an interesting almost statement, an art piece. But definitely not an interesting game. English is not supported. It's free. It's Chinese. Uh, it's a cheap Chinese product uh, as far as a game would be concerned. But if I was to say, oh, this was just an art piece project and I could read Chinese and see what this says, it, it doesn't look terrible. This is something you could put in a museum uh, where it would keep somebody's attention for the five minutes you want them to actually spend at that station. Um, it seems like the character grows uh, as he gets his heart and health uh, bigger and bigger. But of course, since English is not supported, I can't cover it or give any more detailed information at that point. Job done. Next, we have a game on Steam here called Bakery Biz Tycoon. Um, I don't know how this is much different than the Pizza Biz Tycoon games that have... I've seen um, doing somebody's job as a game never really appeals to me. Uh, this does look like it has some decent animation for what is effectively a business simulator game. Uh, it's early access, $7.99, third party EULA, and a bunch of languages supported. It's definitely not for me though, and not something I'm interested in. Um, I, hmm. As somebody who has been spending a ridiculous amount of time watching Bar Rescue and fantasizing about being a bar owner, probably not a manager, uh, there's a passiveness to that idea in, in what I'm doing versus the active of a simulation game that just does not appeal to me I, I don't want to have to actually learn the percentages the numbers the cost assuming any of that is right in a simulator like bakery biz tycoon and uh, the demographics and the research and the market research and all of that stuff that that's all real world work that if I'm going to actually do that I'm going to do it because I actually have the intention of getting a job and I'm going to do it through proper training with proper numbers and proper information. I'm not going to do it through a video game that's going to cheat inherently and make it easier for me to su succeed than it would be in the real world. I guess it is worth mentioning too that like we probably will see a wave of troll games and just public discourse commentary games 
uh, about how video games are violent uh, come out on Steam for the next two or three months after the series of shootings that that happened recently. Um, so yeah, I I don't 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 be I won't be surprised when there's we see more violent games, more shooter games, more 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 uh, things like that. And that could be from people who are, who are trying to put up examples of like, oh yeah, games are violent. Um, there, there's a meme that I put on my personal Facebook that, um, where, it, where it's a woman from, a, I think, a TV show like Snooki or something, like one, one, of the, one of the Jersey Shore people hysterically screaming and pointing their finger on one side and it, it's it says like video games cause violence and then on the other side of the screen is a is is a cat just sitting at the table uh doing nothing and then it says me playing lego star wars the complete saga um which yeah as someone who's played lego star wars the complete saga not really a game that's that's gonna cause people to to be violent um, and while I do play violent games and adult games the like first person shooters and such uh, they're, they're definitely not my main cup of tea and uh, any thoughts actions or even thing anything I've done that's even approached being a violent act in my life has not been come not not come from video games or, or in any way um, if anything I would say it is the exact opposite if somebody is extremely frustrating me, uh, I have found that playing video games has helped to alleviate that frustration in a healthy way instead of uh, getting so frustrated that I might act, enact some form of violence upon them. Um, but inherently, I think it is just a case of some people have it in them, some people don't. Like, that's really what it just comes down to is uh, the violence is in a, lot of, in a lot of ways taught, but it is also in a lot of ways just down to your genetic disposition and your mental stability. Um, so, with all that being said, we have Brutal Games on Steam, which is a l l low effort uh, first person shooter asset flip game. Um, actually, I'm not even sure in this case I can call this too much of an asset flip game because it seems like they really put some time into designing the level layout but maybe the level itself is, a, is an asset that has been flipped um, in inherently these low effort games are getting better and better to the point where it's getting harder and harder to differentiate from them this game is a dollar and 69 cents discounted in English only uh, rather rather cheap for what it looks like although uh, it wouldn't be worth really buying even at 69 cents so that's it that's all I can really say for that okay this one and this one and this one this one stored energy Attack here. Then attack here. And then the turn. Tech there has an article. Float some floats on the Steam Early Access this September. Float some looks a lot like Raft from the looks of it. This is a hype article. Certainly, we've got a little bit of a trailer. Hmm. The idea of taking the concept of Raft and making it more of a, oh, we're going to build an entire city uh, on 
on the ocean and then we're gonna find islands and um, seems like this might be more of a real-time strategy management game where you're telling the people to go pick up items and build yeah there, there might be more of a game here than raft has uh, less less of an obnoxious uh, gameplay loop uh, that being said I don't know how big uh, how big a game or concept like this could be or how long you'd want to really play it uh, but yeah we'll see when that game actually comes out and whether there actually is uh, anything anything to be um, worth playing in that all I need to do is do one damage to this guy uh, now nine damage to this guy I don't know how we can accomplish that now my hand is too full eight cards we can do magnetic and rush but that won't do anything this can kind of do something reporting for right. duty Die, 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 die. That one dies no matter what. Let's go. We can get rid of that. Free of that blasting tower. That didn't work. I'm doomed. Doomed, I say. Tech Raptor has an article here. Devolver Digital announces Witch Eye for iOS and Android. Uh, it's a little interesting that this is the, I believe, first instance of uh, Devolver Digital putting a game on Steam. I guess not, though. According to this article, Had a Full Boyfriend and Reigns also appeared, appeared on phones from Devolver Digital. Didn't realize Reigns did. Or I had a. Oh, I didn't, didn't know either one of them in, uh, appeared from Devolver Digital. So. Now we just need to play cards so we can play like Mech Hunter. And. We don't really need to get everything done, but we've got enough news here. Uh, here's the trailer for it. Seems like it's. A platformer Rexa fighting Jaina. adventure game. You asked for it. Let's go. Where you're playing Begin. as it I, looks like either a fairy attacking witch with Halloween like monsters. I guess that's what you're playing as a fairy or the actual eyeball. Uh, yeah, it looks like you might be playing as the actual eyeball of the witch. How did, how did this work? She turned herself into an eyeball and then the eyeball just bounces around and attacks things. Which is weird. I'm not sure if there's a real game there. <laughs> that feels weird. That, that, that really does. It feels like somebody has taken a concept uh, or, or taken a gameplay mechanic and wrapped a ridiculous concept around it. Next, we have a game on Steam here called Rashlander, which seems to be just a Asteroids clone. Um, it's trying to sell itself as super brutal, but frankly, it looks like it is really just a low-effort Asteroids clone. Or maybe closer to a Lander clone, if you know the game Lander from a long, long time ago. Uh, the reason most people don't know the game Lander is because if you played it all, you played it for five minutes and realized it was awful. Uh, anyways, Rash Lander, I guess it is a Lander clone, uh, not even Rush Lander, is discounted to $3.59. It says it has English full audio. Uh, and I don't believe that. What is this button here? There's a green button. Enhanced Steam. 
Yeah, I was trying to see if enhanced steam would actually work, uh, but I don't know how it's working. Let's see. Hmm. It's putting a green button on the oh, website, quickly. and that seems to be basically all it's doing. I guess some of my plugins certainly stopped working on Steam, but I, I think I guess maybe one of them still has some potential to to enhance some some of it. Anyways, Rashlander's not making it to a fall list. Next, we have a game on Steam called My Bones, and we can see the video here. It starts with several seconds of blackness, which is definitely no way to start a game, and then we're walking through a graveyard. And is this an actual, like, adventure, spooky puzzle game? Or is this a low-effort asset flip game? Seems to have maybe some music playing that would explain the darkness. But honestly, this just this looks, looks like it's kind of nothing. The videos are really giving themselves no good chance of me liking them. The screenshots are just screenshots from the videos. It's called My Bones Remastered. It's a dollar sixty nine cents discounted. It says it has English full audio and subtitles. Um, I have to actually play if I'm gonna play. Yeah, so that's not gonna make it to the following list. Um, Anthem, TechRaptor has an article, the Anthem Cataclysm update has suddenly arrived. Uh, if I recall correctly, nobody cares about Anthem and they've been promising this Cataclysm for a long time without giving an actual date. And now that it's out there, maybe if somebody was still playing that, they would be really happy about that. But in all honesty, I kind of have the opinion that it's probably too little too late um, I, I suspect that nobody really cares about Anthem I, I have a hard time believing that even um, even like Destiny players are super hyped or interested in Destiny anymore let's see And then, are we ready to do that? I don't think so. I want to get as many death rattles as possible. And if I could put this on him, that would be more death rattles. I could do that twice. Yeah, Ooh, but let's just do I wonder it. what this does. <laughs> Uh, Tech Raptor has an article, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, The Black Order Review, Marvel Interactive Universe. Um, so, from what I've he hearing, people seem to be fine with this. I still don't feel like the Marvel Ultimate Alliance game series worked out to be a game that I really wanted to play. Uh, that's kind of where it just came from, it is it? Just felt like they they had done so little to encourage people that really want to play. Let's go ahead. And save. Save our coin. Tech Raptor gave Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 to Black Order a 7.5 good. They say it lets players hop on the galactic battle against Stannis for a Marvel fan who enjoys RPG mechanics. This is a fun buy, especially with others to play. Some spotty online moments, but well worth the fun. The pros are large roster, family of characters, plenty of in-game, and easy to share. The cons are multiplayer spotness, and it might spottiness, and it might be stale. Um, Play. The only thing I 
could play as the coin in this. And this guy has Reborn. So I guess this will be an example of seeing what Reborn actually does. So Reborn apparently means you come back immediately with one health. Alright, fair enough to know that. That guy's gonna die when I end my turn. Hmm. hmm. Next, we have a game on Steam called Sincere Men, which, so far in the trailer, we're seeing a lot of detail, but a lot of dark screenshots too. So this, uh, what I'm seeing is motion and animation that seems to be happening in the hands. When he picked up something, he did an actual animation there. When he Looked around the corner, you did an actual animation. Uh, this looks like this might actually be a game somebody actually cares about, or that's just a really good video um, cutscene. But I have not seen an example of good video cutscenes in bad games. This feels like this is mostly just a VR military game, though. Um, $24.99, it is VR. You know, we have, haven't actually had a lot of VR military games, so it looks like this might be a World War II game. Um, it's English with full audio and subtitle. I'm going to put this on the follow list because it looks like there might be something here uh, worth mentioning. And... So, yeah. I'll give Sincere Men a follow and we'll see if people review it. And I guess if they do review it well, it will still stay on the follow list because it's a VR game, but whatever. Uh, next we have the game Metal Wolf Chaos XD, which was the re-release of Metal Wolf Chaos that was randomly just requested, I think. Uh, I, unless that was all just a publicity stunt. Uh, at either last year's E3 or this year's E3. I think it was last year's. Um, from what I hear, this game's story is crazy and the gameplay might be alright. We can see it's rated very positively and it's $24.99, which is probably way too expensive for what it is. And full audio English, a bunch of other languages. That feels to me like this is a game that should go on the fall lists and I should think about it uh, honestly it could easily just be promoted to the um, promoted to the wish list right now interesting in previous experiences once you got that first special daily quest done you got another daily quest that's not the case here uh, so we have done exactly what we want to do on a Wednesday. We want to get all three of the daily quests done because Friday streams are always slow. Uh, although, in this case, that might be a different example. Um, I guess I'm just going to leave all these packs here. I, I really don't care about any of the cards that I happen to be missing. Uh, I don't even know where I got these cards. These are probably just glitched cards. Um... I don't really feel like I'm going to go to HS Replay with 710 uh, dust and go to HS Replay.net and try and build new decks, new meta decks. So I think I'm just going to stick with the meta decks. Uh, the fact that this new expansion just came too early for me is really killing any kind of motivation I have for it. Well, the this is the perfect time to break up the recording. So as always, I ask you to like share subscribe comment and watch every second of my videos if you want to friend or follow me on any social media sites there's a whole bunch of links uh, down below and if you want to support me even further there's a link to patreon or you can friend me on steam and gift me a game off my wish list 
Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.